Okay, so what I'm going to do is run through the settings here from top to bottom and everywhere where there's a chance to save some battery I will show you and explain exactly why it will save some battery. So let's start with the wireless and networks. So the first thing you probably want to do is go into the Wi-Fi itself and in here you'll see something called Wi-Fi Plus. Now this is apparently going to give you an enhanced internet experience whereas actually it's probably just consuming more battery power than is required because what it will do is be constantly looking for Wi-Fi networks, here you go, evaluating networks, turning on and off wireless automatically and switching between Wi-Fi and mobile data. Now this is not really required because unless you're in an environment that you don't know the networks you're going to be connecting to networks you already know and you're probably going to be manually turning Wi-Fi on and off anyway along with your mobile data so turn that one off the next thing you want to do is click down here we're still in the Wi-Fi settings click on the configure tab these settings are all muddled around a bit on this software but anyway so what we're going to do is tell the keep Wi-Fi on during sleep to only happen when the phone is charging. So this will mean your Wi-Fi will only stay on constantly if your phone is plugged in and charging. So again, that will save power rather than the Wi-Fi being on constantly. Okay, so we're done in this section. So we'll go back and we'll go down to mobile network. So we're still in wireless networks and then we're gonna click mobile network and it's this one here, 4G. Now, I know 4G is nice and fast, but it's also nice and fast at draining a battery, so make sure that's turned off. I personally have not had any problems with just using 3G on its own. I did find that this was actually the biggest draining feature of the phone once I got it, so that has been turned straight off. Now while we're in this section, I also would suggest turning your preferred mobile network mode to GSM only if you can. Now, when you're indoors, you're probably going to be on Wi-Fi anyway, and GSM signals operate at lower frequency, which can travel through walls easier, which means the phone isn't struggling to connect to a 3G network, for example. So if you've got it on 3G, 2G, which is here, your phone will constantly be searching and just checking to see if it can connect to a 3G signal or a 2G. So rather than have it scanning and doing things like that, set it to 2G when you're indoors and you can turn it to 3G when you go back outside. So I actually have a widget on my home screen here, the 2G, 3G widget, which just jumps to this section. So when I go outside, I just turn it to 3G only, or depending on my area, I might put it onto auto if I'm in a dodgy signal area. So leave it on 2G when you're indoors, and that should save some extra power. Okay, still in this screen, we've got an advanced section down here. So if we click into there, we will see the Wi-Fi mobile data switch. I would suggest that you click to never to switch to mobile data and then that will save battery. If you want to avoid the annoyance of having to turn mobile data back on and off, you just click switch to mobile data. But in the terms of saving battery, and for this video, we will tell it to never switch to mobile data. The next setting below, you can turn off as well. So that will ensure that the mobile data connection is always off. Carrier aggregation, turn this off as well. This is basically, if your network provider supports it, allowing the phone to get 4.5G, 4.5G compatibility. Now that does require a restart of the phone if you turn it on and off, so just make sure it's off. I think by default that is off, but uh, just in case it's turned on by your provider, you can turn it off. And again, if you're not using 4G anyway, what's the point in having it turned on? Right, we're back in the wireless and networks settings again. There's more settings in here to fiddle with. So this only applies to dual SIM phones, but the one I have here is a dual SIM, so I will show you what the tip is. It's basically just to turn off internet access during calls. So if you have a call, you probably don't need to be on the internet at the same time as that will be draining the battery, so keep that turned off. Ensure you keep the dual SIM 4G turned off as well, because that is going to just sap your battery quicker than anything. Make sure those are both turned off. If we go down to the next section, mobile data. So we can see here the data saver at the bottom here. Now it's currently turned off. So if we have a look at this, you'll see that the data saver settings, when enabled, will help reduce data by preventing background apps from sending and receiving data. So when that's turned on, 
your apps here that I've enabled will be allowed to use the data still, but everything else will be denied access to data. So anything else you have installed, turn on the ones that you do, I don't really need Fitbit on, that you do still want to have access to data, so you can still receive messages, for example, in WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, or whatever you use, but turn everything else off to save some more data. So if we go back again, we've got call settings. This is quite a simple one. You just want to turn off the vibrate when ringing. That will save the power on the motor, the vibration. So we turn those off. Okay, we're now finished in the wireless and network settings. So we'll click to go back and then we will go down to the device connection. It's quite a simple one for this. You want to turn Bluetooth off. You want to turn NFC off, this is the thing that allows you to pay mobile wireless payments, turn that off to ensure it's not on. You can have quick settings at the top to actually re-enable NFC and Bluetooth so you don't need to worry about getting back into this menu. And the Huawei share, turn that off as well because you don't want other devices discovering that this is on the network, it must be using some form of CPU processing to be able to do that function so make sure that's turned off as well. And that's all we have in the device connection. Next we'll go down to the battery, which is probably the most obvious place you would go to look for battery saving settings. So we've got here the power saving mode. If you turn that on, it's going to restrict the screen brightness, it's going to restrict the background syncing and everything else. So that's probably one of the handiest, quickest, simplest ways to save some power. A few other things you can do, if you go into the screen resolution here, we can see smart resolution, turn that off, you don't want the phone switching to high def and full high def on its own, you want to be able to set it yourself. So turn that off and set the phone to 720p, as I've done here. Now 1080p, 720p, is there a big difference? Well, there obviously is, there's four times the difference. but. I can't personally notice it with my eyes, perhaps I'm getting a bit old, but I have found 720p absolutely fine and have had no problems reading text or seeing any blocky writing or anything. So set at 720p, that's a lower resolution and therefore uses less processing and power. If we go back out of here, we can see App Launch. So this you want to turn on to automatically manage all the apps from whether they're allowed to launch or not. Now this should learn over time which apps you use and don't use, so it will be able to launch the apps quicker for the apps that you use frequently, and it may take a slight while longer to load an app that you don't use as frequently. Okay, so if we just go back, we're going to enable, I've already enabled it, but enable the darken interface colours because the darker your screen is on an OLED display, the less power it uses. So when your screen is all white like this, every single pixel is energised and your battery is being used. So when it's darkened like this, everything that's black, there's no power going to this section of the screen and therefore you're saving battery power. So the only bits that are lit up here are the bits that are using the battery. So make sure that is enabled, that's a, a huge help to the battery. Now hidden away up here in the top is the settings cog, so if we click on that, you can then see in here we've got another option of turning the Wi-Fi off whilst the screen is locked. So it's called Keep Wi-Fi On. If you click here you get an option always while charging or never. I've put it on while charging so you know that when you're charging a phone you can still use a Wi-Fi and it will still be connected when the screen locks and it won't cause you any battery draining issues because you're charging up the phone anyway. You probably also want to turn off the Keep Mobile Data On and that will again Warn you that it's going to cause issues with app syncing, but that will save some additional battery. Okay, so we're done in the battery section. Display. Turn off your automatic brightness. This uses a sensor at the top of the phone. I can't even turn it on, there we go. This uses a sensor at the top of the phone which adjusts the screen brightness depending on the amount of ambient light around you. So you don't want your phone to be constantly going up and down and up and down. If you can adjust it manually before you go outside, make it a bit brighter, and when you go to sleep, just make it as dark as possible. 
It will save the sensor for having to do it for you and again additional CPU and resources in doing that. Okay so if we go to colour and eye comfort, turn off the natural tone as this is using a sensor again to determine the ambient lighting around you and consistently changes the tone of the screen on your behalf. Now I've also set mine to normal rather than vivid just to slightly dim the brightness of the colours and that should help save a bit of battery there. Okay we'll go back up here and wallpaper. Now the wallpapers that are given or that come with the phone are pretty pretty poor. There's not many that are good for OLED screens in the sense of just being completely black or just a solid colour. So I've set mine to the most black wallpaper I can find. Obviously you can download your own wallpapers and set them as you see fit, but this is as black as I can find from the stock photos. Again, if you remember, anything that's black isn't being powered, so the darker the background, the more battery you will save. Set it to home and lock screens to ensure the most optimum performance. Okay, so we'll go back out of here. We're now going to the notch. Love it or hate it, the notch is there on this phone. Luckily, uh, you can turn it on or off. Now, hiding the notch, apart from the fact you may not like it anyway, will actually save a small amount of battery because the amount of screen at the top here, which is hiding the notch, will be black, depending on what app you're in, and therefore it will save a very small amount of battery. Again, this is nitpicking really, but that will help maybe a, a quarter of a percent throughout the whole battery life. Okay, so the next one you want to turn off here is auto rotate screen. Again, this will use the gyroscopic sensor to determine which way your phone is facing. If you turn that off, then the sensor is not being used and therefore you're saving some power. So let's go back out of here and go down to security and privacy. Now face unlock is the one to disable here. If you have it turned on and you find it useful, then that's fair enough. I don't personally use it, I use the fingerprint. But turning this off will make sure that the phone isn't using the sensor to determine when you're picking it up and then activating the camera to scan your face. So turn that one off. The other one you could turn off in here is under screen lock and passwords and it's the always display information. So this is like the Samsung always on display which will use a very small amount of battery, I found it's about 1% an hour whilst it's on. Turn that off and then you'll be saving a bit of power there. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the smart assistants. Now this feature in here, which is quite annoying if you ever put two fingers on the screen, is called High Touch. Now this is the virtual shopping artificial intelligence which is meant to help you find things in your photos. Don't know why you'd ever use it. But it's there and it's annoying and it uses battery and processing so turn that off. Okay so one last setting is the location information. If you keep that turned off it means apps can't run in the background and access your location which of course then uses more power as it's trying to find satellites from the GPS. So keep that turned off unless you're going to use Google Maps and that will save you some battery. And now last but not least is the ultimate power saving mode which I didn't mention earlier, as this is the kind of the most obvious and last resort you'd probably want to use, as this, once enabled, will just give you access to six apps which will specifically only use the internet as and when you actually open them up. So when this mode is enabled, nothing will happen to your phone apart from phone calls and SMS. And unless you actually open WhatsApp or Google Maps or Chrome, they won't use any internet access whatsoever. So we've got, it does give you an estimate if we come back out of how long the battery will last with that enabled. And we can see with ultimate power saving, it should last two days and four hours. With the power saving mode that we've just got turned on, the standard one, which just stops the background apps being used, is 21 hours and 52 minutes. So I hope you found this video useful. The tips and tricks here should help you get way through a full day. Uh, as you can see here, my average since the 9th of July of battery life has been a day and nine hours. 
with a screen on of about six and a half hours or eight hours 48 max. Now again I haven't been using the phone until it's been dead. I've been ending up with about 30 or 40 percent most nights at about 11 p.m. so I haven't needed to have the screen on longer than that anyway. But I will do a proper full AMOLED battery drain test with this phone just to see how it compares to my old favourite the Lenovo P2. So yeah I hope you found the tips useful. If you have any tips of your own please share them down below. If you have any questions or comments also put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until then have fun using a P20 Pro and I will see you again in the next video.